In our complex society, there are the walking dead. Not vampires or werewolves or any such supernatural nonsense. I mean people who are leading their normal lives and are totally unconscious of pending doom. For they are the unfortunates on whom a contract has been drawn. Theater 5 presents The Contract Maker. husband of mine. Your creaking spouse is buried in his favorite chair, absorbing murder and mayhem from the printed page. And never mind that creaking bit. Well, how are you, baby? Have a good day? Decidedly. And did fortune smile on you? Broadly. Charlie, come in, will you? Flash, the lovely Carol Swanson, lucky wife of that man of distinction, Judge Malcolm Swanson, is the new woman's golf champion of Ferncliff Country Club. Tell him, Charlie. Well, in the words of the pro, she drove for show and putted for dough. That's great. Congratulations, Carol. I want to plead a case, Your Honor. All right, young woman. The court stands ready. Exhibit A, Your Honor. The servants are out for the evening. I will accept that as an established fact. Exhibit B. My golfing opponent, one Vivian Shanley, owes me a round of drinks because I beat her two up. Will you attest to the accuracy of that last statement, Charlie? Well, the bet was made in my presence, Your Honor. As magistrate of this court, I must frown on gambling, but I will admit the bet as evidence. <laughs> Exhibit C, I intend to collect said bet. So how's about Charlie and me running down to the local bucket of blood and hoisting a couple? After consoling Vivian and telling her how lucky I was to win, we return and all go out for dinner. I herewith decide for the plaintiff. Whoopee, I won my case. <laughs> Just as you do every week on Cook's Night Out. Don't think the court is hoodwinked, young lady. Oh, shucks, and I thought I had you fooled. As a cook, Charlie, Carol plays a fine game of golf. Oh. Every week, she has some new sneaky scheme to evade KP. <laughs> well, thanks for the tip, Judge. If I ever get married, I'll, I'll watch out for that gambit. <laughs> Plant yourself for a moment, Charlie, while I run upstairs and apply some war paint. Right. Be sure and talk about me. Hey, tell the love of my life about that seven iron shot on the 15th. Will do. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, Judge, Carol's vitality is a frightening thing. She wears me out. <laughs> and what is wearing to you is stimulating to me. Huh? You know, Charlie, to the world at large, a man who marries a girl 30 years his junior must appear slightly addled. Why, no, Judge. Oh, come, no. come, my boy. No need for diplomacy. No, no, no. On the level. You know, everybody here in Ferncliff figures you and Carol for our most successful married couple. Well, I can't speak for others, but we're happy. I'm going to let you in on something. Oh? The autumn of life has many compensations. I'm sure it has. And for me, the greatest is the ability to relive my youth vicariously through the eyes of my lovely wife. Hmm. Her zest, intenseness, desire to live every moment to the hilt. It's a... A stimulating and heady thing. I'm sure it must be. I, I just hope that... Uh, yes? Well, to quote Carol, Judge, this is for real. I hope I can enter the autumn of my life with the satisfaction, the happiness that you have. Just follow my lead. Work hard. Acquire those necessary worldly goods so important to creature comforts. And then settle down gracefully in a new town with a lovely house, rose bushes for a hobby, and uh, the worldly goods, the house and rose bushes could come easy. It's that uh, and that's the catch. Oh, there's a carol in every man's life, Charlie. Oh, sure there is. On the double, Charlie. We want to get there before Vivian gets smashed. I come, fair maiden. I Back come. soon, sweetie. Enjoy yourselves. This book is atrocious, but I have to find out who did the dastardly deed. Yeah. Well, let's see. Where was I? Oh, 
of all the contrived claptrap I ever read. So soon, Carol? Wasn't much of a celebration, did you? What in? Well, come in. Unless you're anxious to use that gun, you might as well sit down. Oh, Pops, I never rush nothing that don't pay. You know, you're the coolest cat I've ever come up against. Really? Oh, you know it. Here I ease in, flashing a heater, you don't even turn a hair. You know, if I hadn't cased this caper up and down, I'd figure I walked into a fix. Fix? I'm sorry. I figured you being the judge and all, you could make the scene. I've been out of circulation for a while. Well, what I mean, Pops, you almost act like you was expecting me. Now, if this is the case, I'm in a bind like you. Dig me? A, a trap. No trap, chum. You completely surprised me. Well, and how come the uh, cool cucumber bit? I uh, consider panic an expensive emotion. Oh, man, you're playing my song. Those lyrics I dig but good. The melody still got me puzzled, though. In case you figure this is a joke, it ain't. Hmm, I didn't figure it was. That's a Woodson twenty-two caliber target pistol. You must be pretty good to use a gun that small. Yeah, I uh, play a sweet anvil chorus with this baby, Pops. Uh, call me Judge, will you? I've played the part so long, I I rather like the title. What's this play the part bit? I'm no more a judge than you are. Not even a lawyer. Oh, is that a fact? Well, come on, fill me in. What kind of a scene you figure we're making in this plush pad? I make you a killer. Right? Hired gun. Oh, forgive me, Judge, but the word don't harmonize. I'd sooner be called, um... An expediter. Dig me? <laughs> it does have a more business-like ring. Yeah, and that's me. Strictly business. Good. Judge, you, you know, you, you really got me going. Let's reprise this from the first eight bars, huh? You want to die? No. No, life is sweet. In addition, the thought of any other life beyond... The uh, religious bit, you mean? Exactly. If there's anything to it, I'm uh, definitely headed for a warmer climate. Ooh, some skeletons in the closet, huh? No, oh, more than you can possibly imagine. Listen, if we're going to converse for a while, let's go at it in a business-like manner. Shoot, Judge. Yeah, with words, that is. Who made the contract? Hey, you're playing a melody line with that contract, but... Oh, I assume yours is not charity work. I just want to figure out the price range. That's high enough, otherwise I'm not here. Come on, I'm hardly in a position to tell anyone. Was it the Cleveland boys? Wee, well, what's with you and the Cleveland bunch? Well, who else would make a contract on me? Well, they didn't. I'm not faking a tune, Pops. Yeah, I mean, judge. Uh, this is no syndicate job. Well, then, who? Play me that French bit. You know, the jazz those Paris cops give out with... Cherchez la femme, I... I think you... Not my wife. You just rung the bell, Judge. <laughs> it never fails. No fool like an old fool. But of all people, me. Well, is there something special about you, Judge? I can claim a dubious fame. Dubious, but possibly of interest to you. Does the name Vance mean anything to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Sort of a code name for the big... Biggest heroin dealer in the last 20 years. You? That's right. Oh, come on. I'm bleeding. I got cramps in my wallet. If I know this, the price on your contract would have been higher, like you uh, been out of space yet. I thought you'd feel that way. And you believe me, don't you? I mean, you don't think I'm misleading you. Oh, come on, Judge. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> Guy don't lie to his executioner, does he? You getting time conscious? What? Well, I mean, you're looking at your watch like a Grand Central commuter catching a train. <laughs> You'll never believe this, but I'm trying to figure out how long it'll take the judge to finish that mystery he's reading. Oh, oh, oh. Now, that's what I call being the perfect wife. 
Nothing's perfect, Charlie. Well, sometimes I think you are. I want you to. Carol, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time together lately, and, well, sometimes, like right now, uh, I have a lot of trouble remembering that the judge is a good friend. Friends are supposed to share things. Look, don't strain yourself. Time is a great healer. It solves everything. Well, you certainly are time conscious. You remind me of someone in a Hitchcock movie trying to establish an alibi. What did you say? Well, take it easy, Carol. I didn't mean anything. I was just saying words. Well, don't make words, Charlie. And don't think. I've taken care of everything. <laughs> You uh, mentioned a moment ago that you were all business. Yeah, I gotta be, Judge. Fair enough. And if you had known who I was, the price for disposing of me would have been higher. Correct? Uh, you got the picture in Technicolor and widescreen. A contract on a big daddy like you was for all the marbles. Then really, you're being cheated. Uh, unless I figure, but the deal is made. Look around this room. See all those books on the walls? Yeah, with one eye. The other one keeps watching you, Judge. Habit-like, you know? Insurance. A lot of those books are first editions. They cost a great deal of money. Well, I'm not big on the reading bit. But money must have an appeal. How much is my life costing? Well, I think I'm digging the theme, Judge, but let's establish the basic beat a little more. We're uh, discussing the canceling of a contract. The one on me. And don't be modest in your demands. My life is quite valuable to me. Judge, I'm sorry, but we're not playing in the same band no more. Explain, please. Well, a guy's got to think of his future. Now, me, I got a reputation. In certain circles, it means something. You make a contract with the hipster, that's what some people call me. You go home and sleep sound. I mean, like, uh, the job is done, you know? Now, we make a deal. It's not good. The word always gets out. Suddenly, a contract with me ain't like money in the bank no more. You get me, Judge? Also, there's a matter of professional pride. Hmm. Yes, I can see your point. I understand. Thanks, Judge. Well, it's, uh... It's getting about that time. The band in the pit is tuning up. For that eternal opera called Forever. Oh, you sure get a nice style with the words. You, uh... You want to take it standing up? Uh, just a minute. You have a little more time? It's getting close, Judge. About my wife, your employer. The lovely lady who hired you to uh, expedite me. Now, she happens to be my sole heir. Is that so? I can't very well change my will. No witnesses. You know it, Judge. And there's nothing I can do about the cash or securities in the banks. I guess you'll get the whole bundle. That's well, the breaks. But... There's 50000 in that wall safe over there. You said before that you liked me. Loud and clear. Nothing's changed. Well, I like you. And I'd a lot sooner you had that 50000 than my wife. You understand this is, this is no attempt to tamper with your professional ethics. Uh, again, Judge, in 4-4 time, huh? I mean, I'm not trying to bribe you. It's my money, and I'd sooner you had it. Sort of going away present, you might say. Well, Judge, I'm touched like... I mean, the background is solid, sweet Adeline. Do you want the money? Well, I'm not sneezing at 50 Gs with no strings, but I'm not going to like spending it. They're coming from you the way it is. Feel free. I'm satisfied as long as my wife is not spending it. All right. I'm getting up slowly, just so you won't suspect subterfuge. Thanks, Judge. Now, I'll just... Uh... Oh, uh, would you pass me that appointment book on my desk? What's the pitch? Frankly, when you get to my age, you have a little trouble remembering numbers. I keep the combination jotted down in that book. I dig in. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. Now then. And to the right. Then left again. And, uh, there. Oh, uh, before I open this safe, let me assure you there is no gun concealed inside. Believe me, Judge, you'd never get a chance to use it if there was. I'm awful fast. <laughs> I'm sure. Now, uh, I'll just place this inside. 
close the door thusly, and spin the dial again. Hey. Nah, now I feel better. Now what gives? Suddenly the music's in a minor key. Just a little insurance, my friend. I assume that your talents don't run towards safe cracking. Uh, I'm a specialist, Judge. Box work ain't in my line. Ah, I hoped as much. Now a little renegotiation seems in order. And I got a quick hunch. You just pulled the fast one. I did, indeed. But the instinct of self-preservation almost always outweighs the bonds of friendship. That appointment book you handed me was leather-bound. Your fingerprints are definitely on it. Huh. Now, if you shoot me, there's going to be a complete investigation. Even in a small town like this, the fingerprint men will be around dusting everything, if only to prove how important they are. They will, huh? Oh, definitely. Mm. Now, uh, I'm just guessing at this, but I don't figure a lad like you got so good in his chosen profession by reading books. As you said, you don't go for the reading bit. Right. So I figure somewhere in your past, there's some practical experience involving a conflict with authority. Meaning? Meaning, down in Washington, they've got millions of fingerprints, and I'll bet yours are among them. I'm taking a fifth on answers, Judge. Just listening. Those fingerprints in the safe, yours, they'll send them to Washington. They've got to. It's the way their band plays. You dig me? Oh, you're coming through, Judge. Well, get this closing 16 bars. They've got wonderful machines, friend, with cards and stuff. And wham, bam, your fingerprints drop into a slot and they match with those on my appointment book in the safe. And suddenly, like, the man in gray is looking for you. What do you call this ditty, Judge? A little calypso bit titled Mexican Standoff. Uh, you got a finale dreamed up? Yes, something sort of buzzing around in my mind. You see, all I want is a little peace and quiet and wifely devotion. Well, I can't tune you out, Judge, not the way things stand. Okay, suppose you write the music. I'll take it from your lead sheet. Shove that phone over, will you, partner? Well, who are you buzzing on the Alexander Graham, Judge? Nobody. You're making the call. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Blue Penguin Tony here. Mrs. Swanson, please. Just a second. For you, Mrs. Swanson. That's funny. Hello? Mrs. Swanson, this is the hipster. What? Has... Has something gone wrong? Well, according to my new legal advisor, a contract on a certain big daddy is now null and void. I don't understand. Well, I got me a new deal on what is known as a contingency basis, to wit. If a certain local citizen enjoys his pipe and slipper time in a peaceful manner, there's no problem. But if a kitten who's intimate with his daddy gets any other ideas, dig me? She and me are set for a duet. It's a special arrangement of, I'll be seeing you. So long, Mrs. Swanson. Oh, my. What's the matter, Carol? You look sick. It's nothing. Nothing at all. I've just made a decision, or had one made for me. We're celebrating my retirement from competition and circulation. I've just decided to give up golf, Charlie, along with a few other things. Theater 5 has presented The Contract Maker, written by Frank Thomas and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Jackie Grimes, Martin Wolfson, June Graham, and Martin Rudy. 
Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastatsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.